just the Symes here, and we're gonna load up. We're gonna take a little Saturday afternoon road trip, maybe stay out overnight. We're gonna head that way and just kind of explore uh, more the, the jungle side of Corretero State. Get out. Show me something new as each morning comes. We wear out the night like we wear our clothes. Dancing right through the fire. Taking us up toward the Huasteca. There's my girl. Whoa. Little girl. <laughs> Gas in general is kind of high here because of goofy NAFTA agreements and all kinds. A lot of it ships back to the United States and then comes back to Mexico. They're getting scammed by the United States. Hopefully that'll change as uh, Mexicanos continue to stand up for themselves. Oh, this is like a stone town all the way. There's all these little shops selling uh, uh, marble and onyx and some really intricate, beautiful pieces uh, that are carved. Wow, look at this, it's amazing. Hand carved stuff right there, that's really cool. Uh, pro tip, even if you're not towing, use your gears, people. So we're in the high desert and everything is like super alive from the summer rains. We're about to head up into the mountains. Heading over that way, we're gonna get into some jungles, I think. And so the landscape is going to shift here. It's gonna be pretty sweet, but you can see that just everything is just amazing right here. Check this out. <laughs> Shrine going on here. People making out over there. Of course. Should we make out? <laughs> <laughs> bustling high country here, switching from that high desert, yeah, and we'll get more and more jungle as we go along toward that direction. Um, one of the things we gotta try and figure out is a place to, to stop for the night. We got everything we need in the truth van here to uh, camp out overnight, but uh, wanna make sure we just find a cool place to stop. So we're gonna be hunting for a place, uh, maybe all the way up to uh, uh, the town up here, but it's getting so beautiful. I don't know, maybe we'll just find somewhere along the way. Tacos are closed here. Little taco shops. Ooh, the smell. This is something you don't see often in Mexico, folks. A pine forest. Look at that. Pines. I don't know if I've seen a... <laughs> I don't know if I've seen a bona fide pine forest since I left the USA in exile. How about that? It smells so good. <laughs> These clothes got blown around. <laughs> these pants and underwear there. Somebody must have been getting frisky. It's so piney and foresty. Mm -hmm. I feel alive. I got forever in my eyes. This is all I need. You can be out in the wilderness driving middle of nowhere and there's a little town. And then you go a little further and you think you're really out in the middle of nowhere and there's another little town because little towns can thrive. The, the more open economy, the fact that little tiny mom and shop, pomp, mom and pop, stores and restaurants uh, can survive that can't survive in the USA with its regulations and controls. It allows small towns to thrive and that's a huge difference you see in Latin American culture. Evergreens are not that common here and it's it's a little piece because for me it's it's a little more emotional. I can't just go back to the states, right? I escaped for speaking out against the government and so if I go back to where I came from, I get arrested. I have nightmares about being in. So I left a place with the largest prison population per capita on the planet, literally run by fascists, and that pulls it off 
with veneer, with the appearance of freedom and nice things and being better than the rest of the world with arrogance, but it's not real. And so when I, when I look at Mexico and I look out over the cities and people talk about the problems and I'm sad with them at the problems and I want them to stand up for their rights and to speak out, but I see a place where people can still live. That's so important. And so to stand on this plaza and overlook, <laughs> overlook a pine forest and, and smell that smell, dang. <laughs> Man. Well, do you guys want apples? Yeah! I don't know. Open the door and look. Gracias. Hasta luego. Gracias. Buenas tardes. Having a hard time finding the camping spot we were looking for, but we did find some food. So food first, and then we'll work out the rest. Mexican music playing on the other, and another blaring on the other side. Yeah, we found this really cool spot, and uh, <laughs> the problem is we got in like super late because we didn't find places very easy. So it was like 10 o'clock. Oh, it was 11. 11. So we got the kids to bed, and we got come in. There's like you know somebody down the beach playing their mariachi music, and so like we camp right here and. Then there's another guy comes in right next to us and he starts blaring his music and another guy over there. And so we camp like in this really quaint little spot on top of the hill. <laughs> so like till four in the morning, we had all the mariachi music from all the vehicles all over the 300 yard radius. I'm old. Remember being young when you could just like sleep anywhere and you just like crash and go to sleep. Oh, we've turned into pansies, people. This is what this is what America's done to us. We gotta start sleeping on beds of nails more often. No. We'll do one of those cool Instagrammy photos with like our legs dangling out over the edge, looking out of the tent. And we'll just post that and you'll never see the video of us complaining about parking in the wrong spot. <laughs> Next to a crap ton of discordant mariachi music blaring across the lake and through our eardrums while we're trying to sleep. You yeah. never have to know that. All you have to know is the romance of us up here in the rooftop tent, the kids far down below in the van. Do like the, okay, put the, you gotta put the feet like together. So we have oh. like. <laughs> Everybody awake? Because somewhere along the line, there's parts missing in here. We had spoons and everything all set up in here, and at some point, something got disappeared out of here. Because we've been using the RV most of our travels lately, so it's just been sitting back here. They were partying there, and they came and partied here, and they were partying there, and then they were partying over there. And we were on we were on freaking top of everything. There was no hill to protect us. So all, all the freaking discordant mariachi music was like right through. Beautiful spot right here outside of Halpan. This is like literally five minutes outside of town right here, this lake. And on a non-weekend, we're gonna scout. We're gonna try and scout a little further down the lake, find something around the bend. So when we come here again, it's a little quieter. They sprawl less, right? So in the States, everything goes out like gradually. Whereas in a, in a Mexican town, you have the town and then the town in. So it's like, you know, it, it's like we're way out in the country here, but really town is like, starts a couple hundred yards that way. Okay, rinse those dishes. Conserve water. Ash, why haven't you finished the food? Is it dry? Hold on. Uh, here's hey. All the missing parts, even spices. Look at that, hey. At least I was actually prepared, Swan. How about that? There's rope. Is this There's what extra you fuel. Mm -hmm. There's spoons, if only a few. Right. There's the part I was looking for for the pan. Hey, there's a sink. I have a sink. You guys find a baby. What? I have a lot of babies. What you found? What? 
cute. Isn't it cute? There's thousands. Right there. <laughs> Little tiny frogs. What do you think, Titus? Pretty cool, huh? I want to catch. Those ones are like almost frog shaped, but they still have tails. They haven't quite turned into frogs I'm yet. A tadpole. Okay, you sucking the air out? Yeah. Suck it down. I figured out how to deflate it without help. Just if you think that the pickup isn't full enough, you can definitely fit some more people in the pickup. It's best just to stop in the middle of the road and then uh, continue onward. Mexicans must think we're a joke having all these seats and not so many people. They're like, you only carry the same amount of people that you have seat belts for? Yeah. Just add five more people. They can see us. They just like stop. Like more people need a ride. I was like following behind this pickup and I'm like, wow, that pickup's full of people. And then they stop and there's a whole crowd just standing on the side of the road and the pickup stops and all the people are like, cool. Tito, you want tamale? <laughs> see what they have. Uh, some more? Verdes y rojos. Dulce? They do have sweet tamales. I want sweet tamales. Is fresa or? Si. Sí. Si? Okay. Here you are. Are you up? Si. Oh, bad. Yeah, they got, they got some fruit tamales. Three tamales for the morning. Other tamales for later. Te gusta this one? Strawberry. Yep, looks pretty legit, doesn't it? Yes. Señorita? Uh, mi estacionamiento es okay aquí? Oh, uh, yeah? Mi camioneta? Ah, sí. Camiones, pasan los camiones grandes. Por eso. Por, sí, uh, es, es, es espacio allá por las bolsas. ¿Hacia dónde se dirigen? Lo siento, mi español es pobre. Ya <laughs> está. Es ok por poco por mi familia, vamos a centro. Ah, una hora. Okay. Okay, bien, gracias. She said we're good for an hour. La banco. El banco. Sí. Ah, okay. Okay. El banco está. Es ya. Mire, si vos me das un compás. Con salto, la lona verde. Okay. Lado hay una. Ah, okay. Aluminio. Okay. Es banco. Okay, gracias, señor. Okay, come on. Baños, baños. You just said you don't care because the world is watching right now. Go to f country. Get out. Sir, don't I respect, control. I'm on the sidewalk. I respect your people, but I would appreciate it if you respect my wife and our baby enough so he doesn't have an accident. Why do you treat people this way? Or do you just hate gringos? My wife and my two babies went in there because my son needed to use the bathroom really bad. And they even would have paid, right? And the guy told them, they told him, no, you can't use the bathroom. So my son ended up actually having an accident because my wife had to go hunt around town for a bathroom. And so I went back in to complain to this guy and tell them, look, that was completely disrespectful. It was, it was not cool, right? An empty restaurant, the bathroom was literally right there. And they're like, no, you can't use the bathroom. And the dude, the, the owner, I guess it was, just flipped out at me. I mean, like, he was so aggressive, I turned the camera on. A mother with her babies coming in, needing to use a bathroom, you let them use the bathroom. And that kind of, that kind of poor service, that's, those are the kind of things that need to be, need to be uh, done away with. And we gotta do that by setting an example. I wish I could build, like, a really nice free bathroom in every town. <laughs> so, just to show people that, I have to say, most people are very respectful in Mexico. We're respectful to them, they're respectful to us. Occasionally, you have people that just don't respect their fellow man. And you have people that don't respect the community, that don't respect their customers. You know, this is a restaurant we might have come to had they had the barest amount of respect. I've actually never seen that level <laughs> when the owner came out. He practically pushed me out of the restaurant for, for complaining about it. And no matter what business you're in, guys, it's important to care, okay? This is uh, in Halpan. Restaurante de Comas y Tevas, okay? And uh, I'm sure that when we come back in the near future, they will no longer be in business because you don't treat people this way and stay in business. So, all right, guys, we're going to go work it out somewhere else. Some people are just that way. Just uh, don't let it get you down. Listo? Listo! Okay, Hell Pam was nice, but it's honestly a little hot and humid down here. And Sunday market. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, there's a spot down here called Pointe de Dios. It's like, there's like signs on the highway, but it's just this little gravel road going down into the jungle. So we're gonna go down and see what Pointe de Dios is. Our fresh tunas. Uh, in, the, in English, we know these are known as prickly pear fruit. They come in red and green. Very, very narrow road. And it's kind of jammed into each other and we can't get past each other. I guess Sunday's not the day to go to Pointe de Dios. This dirt road and suddenly there's all these people parking and so it's one way and there's cars coming from either direction and we're this huge van. Like what needs to happen is some digging off this side because apparently this location is getting pretty popular but can, you can see it's just still a village down here with dirt roads. And so you don't want to go too far over because then we'll go off into the valley. Yeah, see, so you got all these people trying to come down. <laughs> Hola! Is <laughs> mucho trafico? Is <laughs> normal aquí? It's normal. Necesito más grande cae. Eventually, we will get through here. I got to the point where I was just, I was just thankful to have been able to get turned around uh, down into town and be like, no way, I'm out of here. I'm getting out while I can. Too much, too much even for this crazy dude. Let's see what she's got. Son, igual es pero más maduritas. Is is mismo or is diferente? Diferente. Is is durazno's? Mm -hmm. Is ¿Qué's? Briscos. Ah, possibly apricots in English. Uh, is diez do, uh, uno y uno. Opina. Gracias. Gracias. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we made it out of there. The road, that road was crazy. We'll go back there another day. We're in Pina de Moles, uh, back up in the mountains, up in the pines. I love the smell of those pines. And it's cooler up here. It's good for my northern blood. But I'm uh, gonna grab some food and keep on moving and definitely want to check out that, that area down in Puente de Dios uh, in the Fusorda. Looks, looks really cool down there. It was just way too busy today. So we'll come back. Come